Okay, and as a very last thing in this section, I want to show you a very nifty alternative to controlled inputs. You see, we can also submit the form with uncontrolled inputs, basically without referencing the state value. Now, in the following section, I'll show you an example of how we can do that using use ref hook. But in this video, I'll show you how we can accomplish the same task with form data API, which in my opinion is a better approach if you have more than one input. As far as form data API, it's coming from vanilla JS and effectively it's a interface that allows us to construct a set of key value pairs representing the form fields and their values. And if this sounds somewhat funky, don't worry, as we're going to be working through the example, you'll see what I mean. Now, if you're not familiar with form data API, or you just want to get more info on it, please reference this JS Nuggets video where I cover form data API in greater detail. Effectively, form data API has quite a few methods on it. And since I don't want this video to be half an hour long, I'll just show you the most common ones. So first, let's just go to app JSX. Notice over here, I have the starter. I'm looking for 05 form data. And once you navigate, you'll see that we have a state value. So essentially, it doesn't do anything. I'm just going to use it to showcase something. We also have right away handle submit on the form and we prevent a default. Hopefully we are clear why we need that. And then we have three inputs. So we have the name one, the email, as well as the password. And as you can see, I messed up over here. So that should be a password. I already provided the IDs. And I also provided the names. And this is very important. When you work with form data, it's a must to have a name that effectively represents that input. So if you do decide to work with form data, just don't forget about the name. It's very easy to do that. And then your functionality is not going to work. And as far as the setup, let's start with this. Let's get on the same page that if I go to handle submit, and if I log not event.target, but if I log event.current target, this will point to what? This will actually point to a form. So if I go to console, and if I submit notice, this returns a form element. And as far as the difference, so the event dot target refers to the DOM element that triggers an event. However, the current target refers to the DOM element that event listener is listening on. So in simple English, in our case, since the event, our on submit is set on a form, sure enough, event dot current target returns our form element. Now, why is that useful? Because in vanilla JS, there's form data API, which is just a cool setup, how we can directly access the inputs we have, as well as the values. So in this case, I can go with const and I'll call this form data and I'll set it equal to new form data. And one gotcha, don't call the component form data. Essentially, you'll have an error. That's why I named this uncontrolled inputs, not form data, because essentially React is going to think that you're referencing the component. And once we have the new form data, it's looking for that form. That's why we want to go with event dot current target. So we go here with event and current target. And let's just see what we get back. So let me move this sucker down. And I'm going to go with form data. Now, don't be surprised if you see this in the console. So don't freak out. Essentially, everything is correct. It just works a little bit differently. So the first time I started working with form data, I was like, well, wait a minute. Did I pass the correct? target because I don't see anything. Don't worry. In order to access the values, we have few approaches, we can use the get 
method on this form data. So for example, if I want to get the name, I'm going to go here with name, I'm going to set up some kind of variable, we go with form data, and we go with get and then whatever is the name. So again, that's why it's important, whatever is this value over here. So if I'm going to go with name, you can probably already guess what we're going to be getting back, correct? So let's try something else. Why don't we try, let's say email, I'm going to go here, email. And yes, of course, that input needs to be there. And if I log this, I'll actually see the value once we submit the form. So if I'll type here, John, and at Gmail, once I submit, check it out, I'll have this value over here. So we have a few options. Like I said, I'm not going to cover each and every method. If you want to find out more about form data, please reference that video. But in this instance, what we can do one by one, we can grab the email, password and name. Yes, that's definitely one option. However, there's a little bit better option where we can transform this into an object directly. And the way we do that, we use object dot from entries, which again, is essentially a method that we get from vanilla JS. Because what we need to keep in mind that this form data actually is an array of arrays. And just so you don't think that I'm making this up, let me go here where I have the log. And let me go with spread operator, I'm going to go dot dot dot. And then we're looking for form data dot and I'm going to go with entries, just so you can see both of them. So then let me save, let me refresh, and I'll have to provide the values again. So in this case, I'm going to go with john, john over here as well. And then lastly, we want to go here with some kind of password. And once we click, like I said, what we're getting back from form data entries, and as a side note, you can find all these methods over here. Notice it has quite a few of them. And that's why I said that we're not going to cover all of them. I can spread out the entries and I'll have this array of arrays. So this is going to be the name of the input. And then this is going to be the value. And even though this is nice, most likely you'll want the object. For example, if you want to submit this data to a server, how we can do that? Well, first of all, let me comment these ones out. As always, all of this functionality is available already in the readme. And let me go here with const and I'll call this new user. And I'll set it equal to object dot again, this is coming from vanilla JS. Basically, it's not provided by react, it's just JavaScript. And effectively object dot from entries turns an array of arrays data structure into a object with key value pairs. And you can find a vanilla JS code example in the readme. And in here we pass in the form data. And what you'll see, as a result, we'll have this new user now. So once I click, check it out. Now I have an object with all of these values. And the kicker here is that I can send it to a server, I can do some kind of functionality and all that cool stuff. Again, the main point of this video is that we don't always have to set up those controlled inputs if we don't want to. For example, we can use form data, pass in the form, as long as we have the names and all that, we're good to go. We can set up the functionality here in the handle submit. So please don't think that you always, always, always have to set up controlled inputs. It really depends on your preference and pretty much the application you have. In some instances, you'll do that and some, you'll be like, Nope, I actually want to go with form data. And lastly, let's look at one major gotcha. So we did something with this user data, we're good to go. Now we want to clear out the values. You see, if we just re render, those values are going to stay over here. And that's why we have over here the state value, the set value. So just to showcase that I'm going to go with set value. And I'm going to go with value plus one. And essentially, what you'll notice that even though we re render correctly, because remember, we're updating the state value, these are going to stay. And as far as the values, just so we can save a little bit of time, I'm just going to type some gibberish ones. 
I don't think it makes any sense to type anything meaningful. Let's click and notice we did update the state value. It's actually happening. Everything is correct. However, these ones stay in the input. And if you want to clear the values, you want to go with event dot current target, and then the method name is reset. So we save this one and now notice pretty much the moment I will submit. Basically, I'll do something with the data. And as a quick sign out, of course, you would check for empty values. So in that case, either you would get them one by one, or in the vanilla JS video, I actually show you how to do that by iterating over array, which is just less lines of code. And then once we click on submit, notice how we nicely clear the values. And again, don't think that they always stay empty. Again, if we provide over here, something in the inputs, notice again, we'll have the new values here, as far as the new user. And we also nicely clear out the inputs.